Okay guys, I'm at a uh, new house, Pecan Homes. This customer likes to keep it cold inside. I want to show you a, a good example of the pressures on the S-Man gauges when you have a very cold inside temperature, but the system is operating, the, you know, like normal. So here you go. So we got the uh, GSZB4030. And inside, the inside temperature, it's about 70 degrees inside with a very low humidity. So I want you to keep that in mind. So when you hook up to it and you got a low suction pressure like this, uh, it's reading 101 and it's fluctuating because that, that valve inside is opening and closing. It's trying to regulate the, uh, the pressure, but we've got 20 degrees superheat, three, in between three and four subcool. 312 head pressure. So the head pressure looks normal, 312 PSI. The suction pressure looks like it's low, but really it's not low. And this is why it's so important for uh, to check superheat and subcool because the way that the system is flashing is normal. This is a normal flashing. Now I will say uh, we probably set this unit, put it in, released the charge, um, and that was it. You know, we checked it on, on analog gauges. So those analog gauges showed a decent pressure and we said, okay, it's good to go, but they didn't check superheat and subcool. The superheat and subcool, this is a very good superheat, around 20 to 20 superheat. Uh, the subcool is a little low. At least it's reading some subcool, so it tells me that we're still within cooling ranges. Um, but if you hooked up without checking superheat and subcool in this unit, it would look like it's low on a charge, especially if you're just hooking up the suction side, 100 PSI. Even though 100 PSI is within freezing temperatures, as long as that blower motor inside is running, um, it'll still cool fine. Now, I will say, eventually, this unit will eventually freeze up if this thing doesn't shut off all day long, if he's running it like this. Uh, but I'm gonna add some refrigerant to it to get this sub cool up. This system inside inside this panel, if you take this panel off, it's got a, chart, a charging chart on it, and it'll tell you to charge it to, uh, uh, to make sure the superheat is within around 20, superheat and if it is and your subcool is not within range i think it's uh seven or eight subcooling is what the system calls for to add refrigerant until you get that subcooling up to about seven or eight subcool uh if it's not if it's lower than than 20 uh 15 or 20 i think it says 20 on there i haven't took this one off i'm just going off of my experience but if it's within 20 around 20 uh or if it's lower than that say if you hook up and you got five degrees superheat um, you actually need to go inside in the valve and I'll have another video for that and adjust that valve to open that up. So I'm going to top this thing off, add a couple, probably, I don't know, half a pound of Freon to get it back to where it needs to go. That way I can get that sub cooling up. But these pressures are actually pretty normal for the system when it's cooler inside like this. Okay guys, this is the, this is the charging chart I'm telling you about. It's on the inside of this panel. Take the panel off, take a look at the chart. Right here, cooling mode charging with TXV indoor. So allowed to operate for 10 minutes, superheat. Uh, you go to step one, that's done. Step two, that's done because we got a superheat 14 to 17 is what it's asking for. Uh, with it, or, or a little bit higher than that, that's okay. The, the superheat will come down a little bit when we add refrigerant. Sub cooling at the liquid service valve should be seven to nine degrees. Uh, if subcooling is less than seven, add refrigerant to, main, to obtain seven to nine. If subcooling is less, is more than nine, you have to take some refrigerant out. So it's to recover it to get it to nine. So we're at three. I've got the refrigerant hooked up. I've already purged my line here, so I'm gonna go ahead and add refrigerant to this system to get this subcooling up a little bit higher, which in turn should have the suction pressure just a little bit higher and the superheat may come down a tad bit, so. Shouldn't take much. You do it slow, you, you start adding that refrigerant in there and that subcooling starts to come up. You wanna take your time doing this, especially with 410A. Uh, it takes some time for it to go in, go through the suction line, go through the unit, come back out and get your reading, especially on that temperature clamp. So you're gonna take your time on this. Uh, take it easy, you see it's already starting to go up from four.
We want it from we want it between seven and nine sub pool. So it's creeping up, it's creeping up slow. When you see it start to go up, stop adding refrigerant because it's gonna it's gonna go up and keep going up as that refrigerant goes through that expansion valve and flashes. So you can see that superheat, it's coming down slightly. You know, superheat is gonna go down as you charge the system, subcool is gonna go up, vice versa. If you come up to a low system, you're gonna have a high superheat, maybe no subcool at all. So it stopped going up 5.7, 5, 5 it's going up slowly. You can see that suction pressure is going up slightly. The head pressure is going to go up a little bit as you charge the system. And this is why I say this superheat sub cool is so important because the suction pressure looks like it's low. It's hanging out at 31.732. 32 we all know is freezing temperature. So if this customer, if he wants to run it this low, he's going to have to make sure his filter is clean at all times because it will freeze up if not. So subcool is, is going 6, 5.9, so I'm going to add a little bit more. Oh, subcool is creeping up. It's creeping up quick too, guys. 6.8 CI is jumping up quick. 7.3, 7.4, 7.5. So this is probably going to level out around 9, uh, which is going to be perfect. So 20 degrees superheat, and that's going to come down slightly while this goes up. So 7.8. So right now we're, we're, we're within range. Looks like it's coming back down. 7.5, 7.4. And it should go back up, creep up slowly as that refrigerant passes through the system. flashes there it goes creeping back up when that sub cool is dialed in where it needs to be and you got a decent superheat the unit is going to perform at optimal performance. And with these new houses, we know we need this because they're spec'd out for the smallest unit you can put in. They want these homes energy efficient. So the smallest unit we can put in, the less power, that's what they want. So 8.2 looks like we're hanging out at about 8.2, 8.3. It may go up 8.5 by the time we're done with this. But this is what I wanted to get across is that you you cannot go based off of just the pressures you have to charge it off of superheat and subcool